The following is a presentation of TFNN. Live at TFNN, the Money Masters. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-445-1044. Now, the Money Masters. Good day, Money Masters and Treasure Hunters. Welcome to the August 14th, terrific Thursday edition of the Money Masters Show. I'm your host, Steve Rhodes, author of Mastering Probability, the daily newsletter service that is the intelligence for creating financial freedom. I hope everyone out there is off to a great start of their day. Let's make sure that you and I, that we do all that we can do to have an extraordinary and a terrific Thursday. My outcome here during the next hour, well, it's to share with you extraordinary tools, tools like the A to B equals CD pattern, Fibonacci expansions and retracements, candlestick uh, charting, and anything else that we can get our hands on in order to be able to identify where an hour in or how about that? In order to be able to identify where price is headed to. This is an interactive show that means you can give us a call at 877 Nine two seven six six four eight. Always love to hear from our listeners out there, and together you and I, we can go hunting for bulls and bears. But let us remember this, folks: the tragedy of life is not death, but in what dies inside us while we live. Hmm, something to think about. It is terrific Thursday. This is TFN, and I'm Steve Rhodes, and welcome to the show. Right now, flat market out here. Let's go barefoot water skiing. The Dow is up uh, two points. She's trading at sixteen six fifty three. S and P up a point. Traded nineteen forty eight. Nasdaq Composite up a point at forty four thirty five. A Russell two thousand off just slightly, down less than a point out here. Yes, a very flat market. Gold up a buck flat. Silver up ten cents flat. A light sweet crude off 61 pennies. All right, a little bit of movement there. That's uh, trading out at 96.98. To get our call number 877-927-6648. And thank you to Al for uh, piping in that uh, Top Gun music out there. You know, back in the early 80s, uh, I do mean early 80s, I was in the, used to be in the computer retail business out there and was uh, fortunate enough to, uh, uh, one uh, one time went out and visited in the, in the early 80s, uh, 83, 84, I would think, 83, 84, 85, went out and uh, spent some time with a group, I think they're called Computer Accessories. They were just getting their start, as many of us uh, were back in those early computer uh, days out there. And I remember being in their uh, office area on a, I think it was a Saturday, uh, and they're in San Diego, and uh, the building, in essence, got buzzed by one of those F-16s. Now, it really didn't get buzzed. They were just coming in for a landing because they weren't that far away from uh, Miramar Air Force Base out there. But it scared the living daylights out of me. I'd never heard anything uh, like that before. I mean, the windows just simply shook and and everything. And you're, then maybe a year or two later, I think this is when Top Gun came out, right? 86, 87, 88, sometime right around then. Uh, so yeah, one of my favorite movies for sure. And then uh, later on, opened up a retail store in Fort Walton Beach, just uh, down the street from Eglin Air Force Base. So he'd be on the golf course, and and uh, you know, when those fighter jets came in for uh, landing or taking off, whatever. I mean, it's pretty pretty cool energy out there. The only thing that I think has more energy from a sound standpoint, well, the only two things would be the space shuttle, which we no longer have, but uh, uh, here in the, being, being near that when it takes off, that's some pretty. Pretty uh, extreme power. And then uh, Formula One racing out there. That's uh, pretty intense when you get out to the racetrack and you hear those engines whipping around. Anyways, there's no engines in the marketplace as we speak right now. So this is a Stevie stall tactic out there. Nonetheless, you want to know where price is headed to and what exactly is uh, going on in the market. So we'll, uh, we'll give you our best estimates out here. Let's start off by uh, taking a look at the... Uh, I probably should do that during the next break. So during the next break, I'll be able to pull up some additional charts. I won't uh, switch over. Let's take a look at some things that are moving in the uh, marketplace, and then we'll take a look in the uh, next break, take a look at the indices and see what's going on there. You've got uh, precision cast parts out here, PCP. Uh, you've got the uh, auto parts stores that are moving to the upside. So let's go take a look at that sector, uh, precision cast parts. PCP is the ticker symbol. It's up 2%, up uh, $4 and change out here. Let me see. It looks like a uh, increase of share repurchase. So they are increasing their share repurchase. A billion-dollar stock buyout there, stock buyback out there. So they are joining the uh, group. But let's go take a look at its uh, stock chart out there. 
PCP trading up uh, just slightly. This is a weekly chart. Let's switch over back to the uh, daily chart, get a feel for what's going on out here. So Precision Cast Parts had a little bit of trouble that uh, showed up not too long ago, July 24th to be exact. This had uh, 4.4 million shares to the uh, downside out there, and it looks like they were crying uncle and said that's enough. Time to uh, start buying back our stock at these uh, discounted prices out here. Uh, PCP completed a 1 to 1.272. A to B equals CD to the downside. Uh, volume today so far, 265,000 shares, so pretty weak compared to going against 4.4 million shares. We have been trading for 40 minutes out there. So this ought to uh, find some resistance, a little bit of supply level, at the price point of 246.80. That's the high of July 24th. Or the low of the uh, preceding uh, session out there, and that's at 249.80. Expect that area to be resistance. Getting above that would be bullish. In fact, that would uh, say that that could become a uh, support, meaning the uh, 231.12 level. I'm sorry, the uh, 2. 4680 level. Let me give you the right numbers. Uh, if price can get above that, then old resistance should become new support. But more so, it looks like precision cast parts in a consolidation. Let's get rid of the A to B equals CD. Always helpful to understand when uh, when uh, stock is uh, consolidating, and we can easily see that here. How can we easily see that? Well, let's take a look at the highs. The uh, session out here, we had a test of the highs, the high being the trading session from uh, January 21st, 2014. That high had 765,000 shares. It was tested with 693, so light volume. The bottom of the consolidation, well, the bottom of the consolidation, if you come back to September of 2013, let's take a look at that swing point down there because, in essence, that's where price had traveled down to in the 225 area. That swing point low had 690,000 shares, and that was tested with... 777. How about that? James Bond. Bond, that is. So uh, down there with some light volume. So there's your there's your consolidation area. Now, that's important because you're looking at, what, a $50 consolidation. A break to the upside or the downside is your measured move, and that is for precision cast parts. Okie dokie. Let's go take a look at uh, advanced auto parts. I don't recall if we did that during the last uh, hour. I don't think we did. Uh, but uh, if we did, my apology for doing it again. Jeez, how about that? For uh, that's uh, that's the uh, that's really the true blonde hair coming out there because I just can't recall. It was only 20 minutes ago. In any event, if we do take a look at advanced auto parts, it too had a little bit of a, a downer of a session on July 27th, July 22nd. That is. Uh, 1.5 million shares to the downside. Today, upside uh, 400,000 shares. It's got some pretty decent uh, volume behind the move thus far. So, uh, But it has sold off since then. So that's still a, a supply line-ish type area. But if it can clear that hurdle, that hurdle, I'd say, closing above uh, 128.48, that would be a pretty decent uh, indication that it wants to go back and test its highs. Not a high volume high or anything, but if we take a look at advanced auto parts, uh, not really a consolidation pattern here. It is up today above its uh, resistance area of its market profile. That ought to become new support, 125.32, with ultimate support being that swing point from August the 1st out there. And that is on advanced auto parts. Let's put this on a weekly chart out here. Get a feel for what they're doing. And then let's go check out O'Reilly Auto Parts. Boy, how about advanced auto parts? If it ever does fall out of bed, it's a dangerous thing uh, because it says that it would likely come back into October 14, 2013, $82 to uh, $99. So if this thing here, which, you know, at this stage, I don't see anything really negative. I don't see anything negative on a weekly chart. The only negative would be if it ever does fall out of bed, you have to say, look out below timber. Because that is likely where price would uh, move to. Now, I think O'Reilly is O-R-L-Y. Let's see how good memory. Uh, see, it's the, some things I've got a good memory for and others, well, not so good. Yep, O'Reilly Automotive out here. Talk about, now, this has a, uh, this has a better looking stock pattern from the standpoint if it falls out of bed, it actually ought to find support out here on the trading session of February 3rd, 2014. Nice breakout there, 8.3 million shares. Uh, this is trying to, on a weekly basis, trying to get up into its resistance zone of 155.28 out here. So the uh, the discount-ish auto parts stores uh, looking uh, pretty good as we speak thus far. Um, if we look at support inside of O'Reilly, it's really down. Your buy point is probably in the uh, 149.67, uh, although it's got this. I did have some real trouble out here on July 22nd. 
with a uh, kind of a high volume, a slow. Okay, here's here's the actual breakout. Here's the real buy inside O'Reilly. Buy inside O'Reilly, if it ever pulled back again with light volume into that wide ranging bar from February 6th. Here's where gaps are your friends, right? We, we often hear gaps will get filled. What I want to do is, uh, and sometimes people will take that as a negative thing. I want you to take it for what it really means. What we, what we, what, what's really expressed by that is that when you see a gap, a gap you've got unfilled price out there, it's really another way of saying you have a wide ranging bar. Because really, try to explain to me the difference between if price had opened here on February 6th down at about 134 bucks, right around where it closed the prior session, and then moved all the way up to where it actually closed at the 146 level. That's a wide-ranging bar, right? And you would want to try to buy the uh, breakout area where price comes back to it. No difference there. The only difference is you haven't painted in the candle. Aha! Not so fast. Not so fast because that's not true. You see, the benefit of the gap versus the wide-ranging bar is that you've got two levels of support that you can look to. And sometimes price will only pull back to the bottom of that, that gap, in this case here, the breakout being that February 6th level. And so if price is pulling back there on light volume, and then you see some type of bullish reversal signal or maybe it's some volume or what have you. You know, it's where your back is up against the uh, wall. You know, that can become a pretty uh, decent uh, potential buy area. In the case of O'Reilly, it was 2.7 million shares on February 6th. The low there was uh, 141.93. Yeah, 141.93. 2.7 million shares, and price pulled back into it with 963,000, with 594 with 577 telling you there were no sellers that were left inside of O'Reilly Automotive. So the difference between a wide-ranging bar, which a gap is an invisible wide-ranging bar, and a wide-ranging bar is uh, as price pulls into the bottom of the gap. Now, it works the same way in reverse on uh, moves to the uh, downside out there. So at least that's uh, that's that would be my further definition for you to be able to use in your trading arsenal with regard to gaps. Gaps are your friends. They are not your foes out there. Uh, what else do we have uh, moving out here? You've got to Amazon. Amazon had a pretty big day, as I recall, yesterday, uh, and it had formed an island reversal out there. So Amazon, from a, a chart pattern uh, standpoint, let's make sure that it uh, did the actual high inside Amazon for that island formation, 324.87. The actual low of yesterday is 326.14. So you got an island. What's an island reversal? Well, an island out here, in the case of Amazon, it's not necessarily the best kind of island I'd like to see, but nonetheless, it is. We'll call this part of Gilligan's Island out here. This thing gapped down with 17 million shares. It's not exactly how you like to see an island form, but nonetheless, that it did, it did that. It moved sideways to slightly lower for about, uh, well, between July 25th and, uh, July, and August the 13th out there. And it gapped up yesterday, creating an island, and that is a very bullish pattern out here. It had some decent volume behind the uh, move. It doesn't get full-out bullish till it takes out the uh, swing point out here. It's gapped down. It's resistance area, and that's at a price level of uh, 358.52. There's two gaps. There's two wide-ranging bars to take a look at. 877-927-6648. We'll be right back, folks. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Wouldn't it be great if you could get a red light, green light indicator that gives you signals on 25 different future contracts? Now you can with Taz Signal Box. 
This Red Lake Green Light Market Profile System dynamically updates 24 hours a day and provides you with important trend and trade signals on nine different commodities, nine different indices, and eight different currencies. Right now, you can receive a free two-week trial to Taz Signal Box. For all the details and to find out how the Signal Box works, visit the front page of TFNN.com. Andy Heck's powerful weekly newsletter, The Technomental Commodity Report, has delivered multiple triple-digit winning trades in recent months. And right now is the perfect time to get a full month long trial to Andy's newsletter with no obligation to pay anything. Andy publishes his weekly newsletter every Thursday morning where he breaks down the commodity market and provides his subscribers with specific trading recommendations based on his trading methodology. By signing up for a free trial to the Technomental Commodity Report, you'll get a full 30 days to try out this powerful newsletter service and see for yourself the types of trades Andy has recommended for his subscribers. When you sign up for a 30-day free trial, you're under no obligation to pay anything. And should you decide to continue, you'll lock in the low rate of only $59 a month. Sign up right now for the Technomental Commodity Report and make sure you're ready to catch the next big trade in commodities. For more information and to get started today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. You've always taken the long view when it comes to investing, but what if there's an opportunity right under your nose? What if you could be more responsive to market trends to seek to boost your portfolio performance right now while seeking to reduce your overall risk? At Direction Funds, we connect investors with alternative strategies that seek to maximize their returns. Smart investors deserve smart alternatives. Find yours at directionfunds.com. An investor should consider the investment objectives, risk charges, and expenses of Direction Funds carefully before investing. The prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction Funds. To obtain a prospectus or summary prospectus, please contact the Direction Funds at 800-851-0511. The prospectus or summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. Investing in index funds may be more volatile than investing in broadly diversified funds. Distributed by Rafferty Capital Markets, LLC. Many of our new listeners have heard about the Tiger's Den, but wondered, what exactly is it? The Tiger's Den is a lively community where professional traders and investors can meet, exchange ideas and information, and a comfortable, moderated atmosphere. Hear all of your favorite TFNN shows, plus see all the charts as they happen, live, during those shows, and have access to all those charts. You can test drive the Tiger's Den absolutely free for 30 days. It will greatly enrich your knowledge of these markets. Details on the Tiger's Den are on the front page of TFNN.com. Steve, take your phone calls now. now. Toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Traditionally at 727-445-1044. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 23. S&P is up uh, 4. NASDAQ up uh, 7 points. Uh, to the downside here this morning, uh, Learn, K-12, Inc., L-R-N, off about 13%. Uh, 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 kind of a nice day for me. Uh, I've got a, a granddaughter that's uh, going this afternoon to meet the teacher uh, before she starts uh, back at the school um, tomorrow. All right, I'm sorry, on the Monday. So today is her meet the teacher. And then I have a daughter that actually is the teacher. Today she starts uh, her, this is her meet the parents day uh, at high school. She is a, a teacher in mathematics. And yes, uh, she loves when I talk about Leonardo, not DiCaprio, but Fibonacci out there. So kind of a uh, cool day for all of that to uh, take place. But if we take a look at the Learn, not a cool day out there for LRN, a K-12 Inc. Down with big volume. There's a wide-ranging bar to the downside out here. Volume behind the move, 594,000 uh, shares out there. Let's go take a look and see where Learn is headed to, if we can learn anything here. Now, there is a... Uh, gap right here. Here's a high volume low. So it, on a daily basis, that's where she is targeted for. That's at a price point of 17.15. If it breaks through 17.15, not a good scene for learn. Let's put this on a longer term chart out here. Longer term by like, like monthly chart. See if there's anything positive to learn from LRN, from learn out here. Well, there we go. Okay. I was going to say there's not going to be anything. Maybe it wasn't going to get a chart out here. So it looks like uh, from a uh, you know, at least there's maybe a couple people that are in a profit position in this. Uh, but looks like uh, Learn probably headed back to its uh, May 
March 2009 swing point. How about that? So March 2009, the high was 1662. You're trading 1915 as we speak right now, and that's probably where LRN is uh, headed to. Um, all right, so now let's go take a look at the uh, index uh, charts out here. Let's uh, excuse me. Let's start off with the uh, New York Stock Exchange out here. NYSE right now it's up 31 points, up about a quarter of a percent out here. And if we take a look at the New York Stock Exchange, we're going to see a couple different things. Number one, we're going to see a descending price channel that it has been traveling in. And the uh, top of the channel is the, uh, let me get my cursor out here, that'll help me, is the uh, top of the session from July 25th. You can use that touch point. You can use the uh, touch point out here from July 29th. I don't have three touch points out here, uh, but uh, it looks to me like that is probably the uh, top of the uh, descending price channel. Uh, a real breakout inside the New York Stock Exchange. Exchange is going to be a close above that. What is that? What is that level? Well, today would be ten thousand eight twenty four, which also happens to be the uh, fifty day exponential moving average line out there. So right around the ten thousand seven eighty ish type range. If you see a close above that, then the, uh, the New York Stock Exchange would be signaling that the move lower for it is over. It hasn't had much of a retracement, about a point three eight two retracement, um, but that is the next level, the next hurdle for the New York Stock Exchange to be able to uh, get up and over. Uh, it may, in fact, get up to that level and then uh, continue its decline to the uh, downside and stay within that descending price channel out there. We won't know until we see price get up into that area. But at, as we speak right now, I have to say that that is probably the target line for the New York Stock Exchange as we take a look at the uh, daily chart. If we look at the S&P 500 right now, the S&P 500, that is trading up a uh, total, a grand total of four points out there, trading 1951. We take a look at the S&P 500. It has already broken through its descending uh, price channel out here. Uh, that is... Uh, Look, uh, yeah, it, uh, maybe that price channel could even probably dip a bit lower than that in order to, uh, let me see if I do that. That's probably more likely the channel line right there. In fact, that is the channel line. And so if we take a look at the S&P 500, again, get my cursor back out here. There we go. And actually, what I'm sharing with you and showing you are um, all kinds of uh, charts that are included inside my daily newsletter service out here. And that way, whatever it is that you're trading, you're able to go back and get a feel as to uh, what is uh, going on. And I teach you how to utilize all of these uh, indicators out here. So the S&P 500, you know, has broken its descending price channel. It did that on the trading session of August the 13th. Um, that was yesterday. It hasn't come back and tested that area. But uh, at this stage here, its real next hurdle is the down draft from July 31st. So you'd have to say it's probably the high of that, that candle session where she is headed to, and that is up at the 1965 level. You'd say at a minimum that is where uh, she would be headed to. May find resistance there. There certainly was an arsenal of selling out there, but that selling was probably based on uh, something going on somewhere overseas, and Lord knows there's a number of things going on out there. So at this stage here, the S&P 500 has broken its descending trend out there. Right now, we've got the Dow's up 21, S&P is up 4. We get back, let's go take a look at the NDX, the Composite, the Dow Jones Transports, the Dow Jones Industrials, the Russell 2000, the Sox, and anything else that you'd like, just give us a call at 877-927-6648. Steve Rhodes, TFNM. Be right back. Daryl Martin coined the phrase diagnostic trading and we're happy to announce that his diagnostic box spread analyzer has finally been released. The diagnostic box spread analyzer helps you easily identify the best box spreads on Nadex in seconds, plus you receive access to the diagnostic deviation levels as well as step-by-step -step training videos teaching you how to trade Nadex spreads so you can quickly master the mechanics of this simple yet powerful trading instrument. By pulling live data from the Nadex Exchange, the Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer does all the math for you, calculating risk, reward potential, distance to break even for both outright spreads and spreads used to hedge the underlying market. Visit the front page of TFNN.com today to get your two-week free trial to Daryl Martin's Diagnostic Box Spread Analyzer and gain access to the valuable information it can provide when trading the Nadex Box Spreads. If you're an active trader looking for that 
extra edge when it comes to trading and investments? Then now is a great time to get a two-week free trial to Tom O'Brien's daily market letter, Market Insights. Tom O'Brien's daily newsletter, Market Insights, comes out every market day at around 9.30 a.m. and provides Tom's daily commentary on the broad market, including the Dow, NASDAQ, and S&P, plus specific trade recommendations. There's even an update published most afternoons to keep you informed about the day's market activity. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock and option trade. With Market Insights, there's nothing left to guessing. For all the details and to get your two-week free trial to Market Insights started today, visit TFNN.com. The Path of Least Resistance is David White's daily trading newsletter, and if you're looking for active trading ideas, then now's a perfect time for a 30-day free trial to this powerful daily trading advisory service. David uses his years of trading experience to offer his subscribers his trading ideas each morning in his Path of Least Resistance newsletter. Using a combination of equity trades along with options, David keeps his subscribers up to date with all pertinent market information with intraday afternoon updates when warranted. Don't miss out on this great chance to get a 30-day free trial to David's daily newsletter, The Path of Least Resistance, with no obligation to pay anything. David has been delivering solid recommendations for his subscribers recently, and if you'd like to see the type of newsletter he delivers every morning, then visit the front page of TFNN, and you'll find The Path of Least Resistance under Trading Newsletters. For all the details, and to start your 30-day free trial today, log on to TFNN.com now. No matter where you listen to TFNN programming, we want you to know you can always access your favorite shows on demand through TFNN.com. TFNN airs live programming every market day from 8 a.m. till 6 p.m. Eastern. And you can view each program by accessing Tiger TV through our homepage. We even have an easy link for all mobile devices, including iPhones and iPads, located at the top right-hand corner of the TFNN homepage. You can use your smartphone to view Tiger TV. But if you don't have a mobile connection that can keep up with streaming live video, then you can simply visit TFNN.MOBI in the browser of your smartphone for live streaming audio of all of our programs. The mission of TFNN is to educate our audience directly and interactively through our interactive website and radio call and talk shows. TFNN is able to teach all levels of investors the technical skills needed to trade in today's marketplace. In order to get the best information possible, TFNN has assembled the most respected financial minds in the country to provide the most current news and comprehensive advice available. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by TFNN. Test drive all the newsletters for free at TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 30. S&P is up uh, five points out there. And uh, Jay uh, identified for us. Uh, we were taking a look at the S&P 500, taking a look at it breaking its descending trend line out there, which is important. And... Uh, Jay was good enough to uh, say, hey, hey, hold on a minute here, Steve-O. 1958 is the uh, 0.68 retracement of the uh, of the entire move down off of the highs from uh, July 24th. And uh, absolutely correct out there. If you take a look at the July 24th high, that's at 1991.39, uh, down to the low that came in on August the 7th. And that's out at the uh, 1904.78 level. Uh, the uh, normal, normal retracement is a 0.618 retracement that would take into 1958. And so, therefore, it's an area that certainly needs to be uh, monitored. And the question is going to be, could that uh, be the point where it starts in A to B equals CD down? Uh, it most certainly could. I would say breaking the uh, channel line. So how would you put this all together? Let's come back to the S&P 500 uh, chart out here. Um, well, I can do that, actually. Mm. Let me let me see if I can just I'll just draw that in right here. I'll do the it, it may be off just a tad, but you guys will get the uh, gist of it. So uh, let's just draw the uh, channel line in here, and I can always move that. Well, that's a problem. Uh, the channel was yesterday was where it broke out of, so uh, we'll get some type of feel. So in essence, we're going to call this like the uh, the. I won't worry so much about the uh, bottom of the uh, channel. 
So I'll move this up just a bit here. So in essence, that's the uh, channel line for the S&P 500. So how would we know whether when price gets to the 0.618 level, whether that uh, is the uh, beginning of the uh, next leg down? I would say this much. I would say this is how you would take a look at it. And that is this. If, if the 0.618 level, that would, could be today, could be tomorrow, let's say, you start to see price move down. Number one, we'd certainly take a look at volume, right? If volume is increasing on the way down, that increases your chances that that could be the C point of an A to B equals C to the downside. But the real confirmation would come because you've got this nice descending price channel. And whenever you break a trend line or a channel line, what you like to see is price come back and test that area and reject it to confirm that the old trend is no longer there. So I would say the real indication that the uh, trend has not, in fact, changed and that this was a false breakout here, meaning yesterday, today, tomorrow, whatever it takes before that next move comes down, would be a test of this channel line and then price getting back inside it. If price just simply comes back, tests it, rejects it, and move higher, then what you could be really forming is the uh, C point of an A to B equals CD to the upside. So you've got to, I think it's incumbent upon us to always take a look at uh, both sides of the uh, trade out here. What we know right now uh, is that this uh, downtrend, uh, which was a powerful downtrend to the extent of one day, really, right? I mean, it's just this candle session right here that uh, was really the only significant, substantial problem in the uh, market. And as I've said, you know, several times here as of late, a powerful enough session to have changed the weekly outlooks and the uh, monthly uh, charts out there with it occurring on the last day of the month. So it was an important uh, candle session. Uh, the bulls would uh, do themselves really well to get above the high, which is where things broke down, and that's the breakout breakdown area, and I would say maybe more likely where price would uh, pull back to. And again, that level is at 1965.14. So I hope that that is uh, helpful, you know, in, in our analysis. Again, we never really know where price is going to, right? But what we can do is we can sit back, we can take a look at everything, we can plan and say, okay, here's what I'm going to do from the short side, here's what I'm going to do from the long side, here's the tests that I want, and when you see those tests take place, then you're able to uh, take action because there is never a time when you are more objective than before you are in a uh, trade out there. And then it's a matter of managing it from there. You know, it has something that changed in the uh, trade. So in any event, that was on the S&P 500. Let's take a look at uh, let's take a look at the Russell 2000 out here. And we can do the same kinds of things inside the Russell. What do we know about the Russell? Well, the Russell, when we take a look at its descending uh, price channel out here, uh, it broke through that and it came back and tested it. Now, the Russell 2000 is a uh, just kind of a great indicator as a tool with regard to the uh, kind of like the fuel rods of the uh, system. When the Russell 2000 is moving higher, the interpretation that you can uh, utilize from it or maybe that you should utilize from it is the fact that you've got a lot of liquidity in the marketplace. Because, the you know, when there's a lack of liquidity, it's the small caps that are really going to get uh, hurt first. So not necessarily that. And, and that's really uh, one of the great tools. I wanna, what I think is one of the great tools. Now, when we take a look at the Russell 2000 and its descending price channel, the blue diagonal lines going across my uh, screen out here, what we can see is that the price broke above it, and this is on the uh, trading session of uh, August the 11th, got back inside it uh, two days ago, and then pounced back out yesterday. So this trend line, this channel line, I should say, has been tested. And that's on the bullish side of the Russell 2000. The bear side is it really hasn't done much here, but you know what it's really fighting? It's fighting that downdraft session from July 31st. That's really what it's dealing with. If we blow this up a little bit more out here, and if I were to draw a line, not if, well, in fact, I'll draw a line. Let me do this here. Um, let me do this on this chart here. I don't want to have to change all the patterns that I've got drawn over there. So let me just come over to the e-signal chart, and I'll turn. It's easier for me to just turn a few tools off here. So let me do that. Uh, let me even get rid of that. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of this. Let's get rid of uh, this. There we go. Okay, so we take a look at... I thought I'd get rid of that. Hmm, that's pretty interesting. Um, tried to get rid of the profiles out there, but uh, to no avail. Now, the real issue... And what it's dealing with here, here's the Russell 2000. Where's that, uh, where's that uh, candle from? Uh, here we go. 
here's here's the level that's acting as its resistance area right now and that is uh, and this probably is a fairly telling message today right if we take a look at you know i spent a little time discussing uh gaps down boy why won't that go away so weird oh i probably didn't hit the right button that's why Okay, there we go. So now it's now it's a lot cleaner for us. Okay, so the Russell 2000, right? Maybe we get a ton of information from the Russell here today. If we take a look at its uh, downdraft session, right? Its gap down that took place between the July 30th, July 31st session out here. So it's a low of July 30th right now, which is 1142.54, and you can see that that area was tested on August the 11th, and it was tested on August the 13th. And both times that level was rejected. You know, when you get three tests of an area, uh, it helps to really identify and solidify a level of support and resistance. Now, today, if we see another close below 1142.54, the Russell 2000, we'd have to say, hmm, something to think about because it's really showing some resistance. And maybe that uh, bodes well to say, hey, the counter trend rally could be over out there. Likewise, a close above 1142.54, it'll be the Russell. That'll be the first one up and over its uh, her. Well, I don't know if it's the first one. That that that's that could be a misnomer out here. But uh, let me go back and take a look at the NDX. So we'll do that. But but so this is something for us to pay attention to inside of the uh, Russell. Let's go take a look at the NDX and do the same thing out here and see if it is over its a level. And no, it is not. So uh, maybe today we've got that today is actually kind of testing that level. So the same thing that the Russell is doing, the NDX is trying to get ready to do. So 3960.29 out there is resistance. So how would you put this together? Well, you'd have to say that if the NDX today can get up to the low of uh, 3960.29, close below it, course have lighter volume um, you'd have a rejection of an area where it broke down from that being the july 31st and if the russell 2000 did the same you'd have two of the four indices telling you that at this stage here they're getting really tired trying to take out that uh, resistance line so um you know we'll have to come back and take a look at that in the uh, morning or what have you but that's what's going on inside of the ndx really no downtrend channel here to speak of right i mean what's what's the downtrend inside of the ndx uh, 100 that you could come up with pretty much nothing Right, I mean, what are you going to use? This is a uh, trend line. Um, I guess you could, you know, if you know, yeah, sure, we could use that as a trend. So now you've got price coming into what a diagonal uh, trend out there and a horizontal potential resistance area. Yeah, I guess uh, you know, no reason why you why you couldn't use that or that you shouldn't use that. So then we, well, then what we could say here with regard to the NDX is if it clears that area, you know, it's probably. Not just headed to the uh, swing point out here from uh, July 24th, but uh, if it gets above that, it'll set up a fairly decent A to B equal CD pattern uh, in the uh, marketplace. That's on the NDX 100. Uh, let's take a look at the let's go look at the SOX index. We'll do it uh, both ways out here in the uh, SOX. And if we take a look at the SOX, it's broken through its descending price channel out here. Um, as best as I can uh, figure, as best as I can identify it, it might even be that that's not even the right price channel. You, you could argue if I take a look at a, uh, uh, let me do this here. Let me come back to, uh, let's come back to this, this chart right here. So let me come back to the uh, SOX index. We'll put that on the uh, screen. And uh, you'd, you'd almost really have to more argue well, you'd, you'd probably the trend line is better established here from the uh, from the low. So let's do that. Uh, let's just come from the trading station here from August the seventh. Let's try to identify you know three or four co-located open or closed bodies out there, and that gets us really close. So you'd have to say that that is really the uh, trend line. That's our plumb line right inside of the uh, sock. So if I just simply pull that over here to try to come up with a uh, trend. You know, you're pretty much inside it right now. So the SOX today, realistically, is taking on its trend line. So it, too, is trying to break above its uh, channel out here. Uh, right now that I've got, and that's typically how I'll draw my uh, channel lines out there. What I will do is I'll first use a line tool to try to identify the largest number of uh, co-located opens and closes. Then it becomes pretty easy out here. So this is just a quick uh, Stevie uh, trick out here, a uh, tool. If you don't use that, then it becomes really easy to draw the rest of the uh, trend. And then you come back and just simply go ahead and delete 
the uh, delete the actual uh, line itself. So there, there is what uh, should be a really good uh, channel line for the uh, SOX. And we can see inside the uh, SOX index right now, it's really trying to uh, deal with that and uh, take that out as we speak right now. If you take a look at retracements or its issues, it's got issues at that, uh, not July 31st, the SOX has got issues of its own, and July 25th is that uh, level. And that's its real, real first hurdle that it has to deal with. If we take a look at retracements, so, so you can see the SOX, which really has been a pillar of strength out there, a little bit weaker in the uh, marketplace. And by weakness, what we're measuring is we're, we're measuring the, uh, that, that didn't work out right. Let me delete that. Let me come back and put the uh, the uh, retracement levels in here. Well, that really didn't work. Come on, Steve-O. Get your uh, track together. There we go. There's my act, and now it's together. There's the uh, proper uh, retracement level. So you can see the SOX has only done a .382 retracement. So how would you how would you go about using this information? I would say the way that you would use this information is if the market were to start its way down, you'd come take a look at the SOX index as one of the areas of uh, potential weakness. Why? Because if you were to draw your A to B equals CD pattern in here, let me put that tool back on my uh, screen. If we were to draw that pattern, and if this was the extent of a move, let's say that the move began today on the way down, what the SOX would be communicating to us, whoops, right here, here's our B point, uh, would be that uh, the A to B equals CD down projection in this would uh, probably take it to about the uh, 564, 549-ish type of level out there. I'm not saying that's going to happen here, but what we're doing is we're just simply uh, we're going around and taking a look at the charts to say, hey, what does this chart pattern uh, mean to us at this stage? Looking for strength, looking for weakness to try to figure out what's going on out there. And I think if we actually, if I, were to, I think if it's ticker symbol MU, is that uh, Micron Technology? Yeah, so Micron Technology has one of those uh, most bearish uh, patterns out here in the uh, marketplace. Take a look at it. Micron Technology has an island top reversal. That's from uh, July 16th out here. And I don't know what uh, I don't know what uh, Micron Technology is from the standpoint of uh, of waiting with inside the uh, socks. But uh, I believe this may also be, is that an all-time high? So let me take this, put this on a, a monthly basis here real quickly. Yeah. So Micron, now the monthly chart doesn't look too shabby out here. The monthly chart has not given us, no, it's not all-time highs. Okay, good. So Micron, no, not anywhere near all-time highs. The all-time high inside Micron takes you back to 2000, up at the 90 uh, 750 level. And if we take a look at retracements, just for the heck of it, from uh, that level down to the uh, lows that were put in here right in the uh, 2008 time frame. It hasn't even made a dead cat bounce, interestingly enough. Well, Micron Technologies needs to get up to the 3823. Almost looks a lot like the uh, uh, XLF, like the uh, financials out here. But nonetheless, it was not the... Uh, on a daily basis, on a monthly basis, hey, no problem, not really a big deal. No reversal signal here just yet. Let me see what about the weekly basis out here for Micron, just as long as we're looking at it. Yeah, the Micron Micron had this little uh, shooting star doji candle on the weekend of July 14th. No follow through the next session, but a bearish engulfing the week of July 28th. So it's got some significant resistance up at that high at 3485. But the daily chart is the one that tells it all. So we get back from this break. Let's go see what the A to B equals CD to the downside is inside of uh, Micron Technologies if it continues to move lower. Right now, we've got the uh, Dow up 28, S&P's up about 5. Steve Rhodes, TFN, we'll be right back, folks. Does the current market volatility continue to stop you out of trades when the market spikes against you? Now is the perfect time to open up an account with Nadex. Nadex, the North American Derivatives Exchange, is a brand new, completely regulated Chicago-based exchange. And unlike most other exchanges, Nadex allows you to trade directly through them with direct market access when using their completely free trading platform, which also features real-time charts and full customization capability. One of the advantages of trading with Nadex in volatile markets is that your risk is always capped and you have the ability of keeping your trades open even when the market spikes against you. Nadex is completely brand new with a line of unique trading products that are unavailable anywhere else. See how it works at Nadex.com. That's N-A-D-E-X.com. 
or click on the Nadex banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Futures and options trading involves risk and may not be appropriate for all investors. Tom O'Brien's weekly gold letter, The Gold Report, gives complete and concise coverage of the entire gold market. Inside, you'll get Tom's commentary on gold, the dollar, the rand, the bond, the XAU, the HUI, and detailed coverage of nearly 25 mining stocks. He'll give you the entry price, price target, and stock price of each stock trade. The Gold Report is a long-term newsletter where the focus is on building real wealth through the management of a successful portfolio of gold stocks. With a lifetime of knowledge and almost 12 years of writing his informative weekly newsletter, The Gold Report, Tom O'Brien can provide you with the important market information to help you make better trades in the gold market. Don't let the next bull run in gold pass you by. To get a month-long free trial to The Gold Report, an $85 value, visit the front page of TFNN.com today. David White's newsletter, The Technology Insider, is focused like a laser on finding the next big things in technology. If you had invested only $10,000 in Microsoft in 1986, you'd have been a millionaire by 2000. Disruptive technology like Microsoft's is the key to these massive long-term profits, and The Tech Insider is the vehicle from TFNN to capitalize on these opportunities. This is the go-to newsletter that identifies, monitors, and profits on mostly little-known cutting-edge companies with great long long-term prospects. David's experience is as an inventor of Emmy-winning animation products for TV and Hollywood that propelled a company public. Match that with 14 years as a full-time trader, and he's uniquely qualified to guide you through the light-speed world of ever-evolving high-tech. If you're ready to ride the next big technology bull market for less than $40 per month, log on to TFNN.com and get your two-week free trial to the Technology Insider. Get in on the ground floor of the next big thing today. We're told to follow our passion and everything else will fall into place. I hope that's what each of you are doing each and every day. Hi, I'm Steve Rhodes, host of the Money Master Show at TFN.com, and my passion for technical analysis is what led me to the most fundamental discovery and pattern recognition, the Rhodes Momentum Indicator, market scanner and trading strategy, a set of tools that identify the momentum and the power of the trend, the likes of which have never been seen before for every market and every time frame. Yes, folks, the trend is your friend, unless you're on the other side. New to technical analysis? This is the place to start. And experienced traders, take advantage of the trend like never before. Experience the power of the Rhodes Momentum Indicator each day, available to subscribers of my newsletter service, Mastering Probability. I guarantee your satisfaction for the next 30 days unconditionally, so there's no risk to you other than being on the wrong side of the trend. Mastering Probability, available on the homepage of TFNN.com. And folks, live with passion. Catch Basil Chapman as he uses his Chapman Wave methodology to call the markets. The Tiger Technician's Hour, next on TFNN. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Dow's up 21. Uh, S&P is up uh, 4. NASDAQ composite up 8 points uh, right now. Uh, kind of a quietish type uh, market out here. Uh, you know, over in Germany and uh, uh, and the UK, not a lot going up. It's up. DAX is up 32 points. Uh, FTSE up 26. That's about the same spot it was at uh, at uh, 9 a.m. this morning. I think there's a question in the den. Uh, one of the individuals looking to maybe put on a, a short out here. So uh, let's uh, take a look at let's take a look at a 30 minute chart. 30 minute chart, pretty decent uh, time frame out here to look at. You know, changes in trends, right? They're going to take place on a 30 minute first, 60 minute next, uh, you know, 10 minute first, one minute first, right? Uh, but you got to you got to use a degree of reasonableness with regard to uh, you know what you're going to uh, look. Just stay stay within the time frame that you're going to uh, trade out there, or at least look for that uh, signal and then come back to the larger time frames. But the if the question were posed to me right now, would you uh, what would be the reasons to take a short right here right now with regard to the S and P 500? Um, the only potential thing that I could come up with, and I can't even come up with that, is that uh, uh, on the 30-minute chart, you might be at a, uh, at, uh, and I'm looking at just coming off of the low here from 1030 in the morning on August 13th. So that was yesterday, right? So if you use that as a, a point, then, you know, we're at that fourth uh, Chapman wave uh, potential 
peak, but that doesn't even occur until the 11, uh, uh, we're in the 11 o'clock session, not till 11.30, so that doesn't even confirm. We have a price relative strength divergent pattern, and we are at the uh, fifth point during the beginning of that pattern. That pattern began right out here at 7 o'clock in the morning, and that was on August the uh, 13th out here, and the first, uh, the first potential pattern showed up right here on the bar at 11.30, but that was only potential, never got any type of uh, confirming a signal out there. Uh, in the marketplace, uh, you know, you got a second event out there, but that wasn't a reversal signal. And that was at 12 noon. We got a third event out here, and it did give us a signal. That was at uh, 5 p.m. in the evening, and that was on uh, August the uh, 13th out there. But we, ne you know, we never saw any kind of break of uh, the market profile. That's the red uh, dash line. Maybe tough to see, but we never saw a break of that level. And we know that old resistance becomes new support. So at this stage here, you've got the market profile at 1944. And so you're trading 1947. You'd sure like to see this thing get below 1942. So my answer to that question, is there any type of real short signal here right now other than trying to sell the top tick? Um, uh, you know, and, and, if, and if that's your trading style, that's that's cool. That would be the only thing that I could come up with. And you know, so you could you could take the sell, and you'd have your stop right above the uh, the actual high of this uh, trading session. But otherwise, I don't see it here uh, in the uh, cards uh, just yet. At least not in the ES mini. If I were to take a look at the uh, the Dow, which is uh, weaker. Um, let me take a look at the Dow. In fact, I probably have that chart somewhere over here. Let me see if I've got that. If I can do that in the next uh, uh, 30 seconds or so. Yeah, so if we take a look at the uh, Dow, well, that uh, you're probably going to now have to use this as your, as your uh, numbering uh, spot right here down at this low. Um, so the Dow, uh, let me refresh this. Let me reload this. See if we still have a price relative strength divergent pattern here. You've got, uh, you, you do have a price relative strength divergent pattern. The Dow here is trading down at its market profile low, its support level on the uh, 30 minute uh, time frame. So really, 16,629 is a key level for it to uh, close below before it might be giving you some type of uh, signal out there. But then you'd have to be saying the Dow is going to pull everything down. And that means that you would be neglecting looking at the NQ out there. So hopefully, folks, all of this has assisted you with uh, where the markets are going, what they're doing. Stay tuned. Our man Basil Chapman is up next. He's going to take it away from here. It is Terrific Thursday. That means Larry Pesavento following Basil. Daryl Martin, uh, David White, and then I'll be filling in for Tom today from uh, 3 to 5. I believe he is uh, traveling today, so I'll be back with you. This is my uh, beautiful, long day. Have a great Thursday, folks. Take care. Since 1984, Basil Chapman has been using the Chapman Wave methodology to advise traders of his expert market opinion. While originally hand-drawing charts from the late 1970s into the 1980s, Basil noticed that prices under most circumstances virtually always had a certain number of legs to the upside before declining sharply. Later, Basil found that computer software, which included the standard market technical indicators, enhanced the degree of accuracy in calling price turns, as well as market trend calls. Thus was born the Chapman Wave sequence. Using the Chapman Wave methodology along with other indicators, Basil Chapman advises his subscribers of his expert market opinion each market day with his opening call newsletter. Right now, you can get a two-week free trial to the opening call, Basil's daily trading newsletter, by visiting the front page of TFNN.com. Cancel at any time during that trial and pay absolutely nothing. Get your two-week free trial to Basil's newsletter, The Opening Call, today by visiting TFNN.com. This is TFNN.